The building code requires fire resistant ratings for certain types of construction. In the International Building Code, there's a table that provides the basic heights and areas that are allowed for specific occupancies and specific types of construction, and that's table 503. And it gives you the allowable square footage, the baseline allowable square footage, and also the heights, number of stories, and how tall you can go and there's variations on that depending on how much fire protection is provided on the elements of the building. Now to find out what the requirements are for the fire protections, then you go to table 601. And in table 601, it tells you the amount of fire resistance in a nomenclature of hours, and it categorizes it under type of construction. There is also 602 for the exterior walls, so the closer you are to another building, the more requirement you're gonna have on the exterior wall. Type one and type two are considered typically non-combustible construction. Type three is, and type four is typically non-combustible on the exterior walls and combustible on the interior. Type five is any type of material. It's usually combustible material that's allowed per the building code. Now wood can play a role in most of those types of construction. Type three construction, there's an exception in the code that allows fire retardant treated wood on the exterior of the wall. So basically a type three construction can be an all wood building. Type four construction, similar to type three is it requires exterior walls to be non-combustible. Now with the 2015 code, Cross-laminated timber is allowed in the exterior walls with either a 15 32nd inch fire retardant treated plywood on the exterior walls or 5 8 drywall on the exterior walls. It also allows it in the floor as long as the minimum thickness of that floor is four inches. In addition, it's allowed in the roof as long as the thickness of the panel is three inches. So basically, you can have an entire building of cross-laminated timber under heavy timber construction. Now, within Type 3 construction, there's a requirement of fire resistance rating. And under the current code, there is no fire resistance provisions for cross-laminated timber. But to meet those provisions, one is you could do the calculated method. Also, you can utilize the testing that was done by American Wood Council which showed that an assembly of five plies of cross laminated timber with five eighths inch jip on each side can last beyond the two hour resistance rating, up to three hours and six minutes. The fire test that was performed was ASTM E119, and that's a requirement within the code. You would think you could get a bigger building with type two construction because it's non-combustible, but really you can get the same height and same square footage with heavy timber construction. And a lot of architects and designers out there aren't really aware of that because they're not that familiar with heavy timber construction. Sprinklers allow you to go one story higher. Also sprinklers allow you to increase your square footage within that building. And then also type three, type four and type five construction, you can increase your square footage with the amount of area around the building. It's called a frontage modification increase. Another way of increasing your area is by adding firewalls. Because if you add a firewall, the code treats it as two separate buildings. That means you can have a larger building because of that firewall. Now, if you add sprinklers to that and you add the modifications for open frontage, that means tripling your square footage by having sprinklers in the open frontage around the building.